A new book suggests that a culture of fear is causing a major block of the president's supporters, the working class white voters, to support the policies that hurt them. The book is Dying of Whiteness, How the Politics of Racial Resentment is Killing America's Heartland. And the author, Jonathan Metzl, joins me now. Jonathan is a sociology professor and director of the Center for Medicine, Health and Society at uh, Vanderbilt University in Nashville. Jonathan, it's good to see you again. It's been a while. I think you've been working on this book because have, it's, yeah. it's quite a... a heavy and um, dense book with a lot of facts and figures, but are you arguing that some of the president's policies hurt no, not just Americans as a whole, but that the president's most loyal supporters, working class white voters, are hit among the hardest? Well, that's exactly right. Basically, the main argument of the book is that the politics that the president and GOP politicians often claim will make white America great again end up making working class white lives harder, sicker, and in many instances, shorter. I spent about five or six years studying what happens if you lived in a state, for example, that blocked health care reform, uh, that enacted massive tax cuts that cut away money for roads, bridges, and schools, and other policies like that. And what I found was these policies that were supposed to restore you to greatness if you were a working class person and including a working class white person these policies were as dangerous to you as asbestos or not wearing second give, uh, give, not wearing a seatbelt give yeah. me an example what what kind of policies are you talking about that you deem to be racist well a great example would be the rejection of, um, of basically blocking the affordable care act in Tennessee I did a lot of work mm -hmm. in Tennessee talking to people about why it was that they weren't supporting the Medicaid expansion why they didn't want the affordable care act in their state. Um, I talked to one uh, man, for example, in a focus group named Trevor, who I'll never forget. And I told him, look, this guy, this guy was quite medically ill. And I told him the, the Affordable Care Act could really help you. This man was quite, quite medically ill. And he said, I know it could help me, um, but, uh, but I'm going to not support this in a way because what he told me was uh, this program is also going to send my tax dollars to what he called Mexicans and welfare queens. And so this, this narrative that undeserving immigrants or minorities are going to take away my resources led people, I felt, to support politics that ended up boomeranging and hurting their own health as well. Yeah, and you went from Tennessee, you went through Missouri, you went through Kansas. Um, communities where a fair amount of gun owners, and I want to talk about gun control, the rate of suicides in working class white communities. Jonathan, do gun lobbyists play a role in manipulating this group? I mean, it, it, that's a huge part of my story. I understand that there's a long Second Amendment tradition of gun ownership mm -hmm. in this country. Um, but when I went to places like Missouri and talked to them about gun policy, I would ask people, why is it that, you know, you need a gun in your bedroom or un under your bed at night? And people would say, well, people are telling me that somebody's going to break into my house. It turns out the main cause of death in places like Missouri were, was gun suicide and partner violence, things that were happening within people's homes, within their bedrooms. And there was no safety plan for that whatsoever. And so the data that I, I show in the book is, is, is quite remarkable that ultimately what happens is white working class people's lifespans are shortened because of these policies that don't take their safety into account. When you talk about whiteness, I mean, how did the subjects that you interviewed for this book, how do they define that? Is it the same as what many consider uh, to be white privilege? Well, I, I want to be clear. I'm not talking about whiteness as a biological category. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about it even as a political category. What I look at in the book are when politics that are basically anti-government, anti-immigrant, pro-gun politics, these particular politics, when they work their way into health policies, that's really the story. It's a story about policies, not so much people. But I would also say that part of my frustration in writing this book is, is a frustration that there are many ways to be white in this country. And I encountered people who were working class white and they were brave and generous and communal and so it was kind of a frustration that the politics and policies that were representing them were really the the, the worst demons of whiteness it, telling people basically we need to protect what's ours because somebody's going to come take it away so then do you think that race ought to be more openly considered when public policy decisions are being made i certainly think that many underlying many issues that we're talking about today many, including many i talk about in the book, there is a racial tension, not just about minorities, as we talk about all the time in the news right now, but also about whiteness. And so what I do argue in, in my research is that politicians and policymakers need to talk much more openly about white racial tensions and what that means. And the other part of this is many of the issues I study in the book have long racial histories in, in this country. And so 
a, another part of what I argue is that we need to look at the, the history of whiteness in order to understand how issues like Obamacare or guns or tax cuts have the charges that they do right now. Yeah. It is a big book. There are a lot of big ideas here, but I got to say the one that stays with me is the one of the man in Tennessee. I guess it was Trevor, you said, who, you know, despite what could help him, doesn't want to invest in that. That was, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, anyway. Um, okay. Jonathan Metzl, thank you so much. Best of luck with Thanks the book. Thanks so much. Thank you.